parable in the gospel tells us of three investors, three financiers, three traders. But there were also servants, servants of the king. They weren't free. And the king puts them to the test to see if he can trust them with far larger amounts of money than they had ever worked with before, and perhaps then reward them even with their own freedom. He calls them in, therefore, and he gives them these great gifts. And then he leaves, and leaves them to exercise their freedom. Two of them, as we just heard, worked very hard, and they truly doubled the worth of the wealth that had been entrusted to them. They proved themselves trustworthy and were given to understand they won their freedom, entered into the joy of the Lord. Must have heard those words, although it's just a story, we know, but we should hear them too with great joy. For the joy of the Lord is the only joy that lasts forever. But one of the Investors played it too cautiously. He was afraid to take a risk. The gospel calls him lazy and therefore wicked. He lost everything. Not because he was a bad investor, but because he wasn't generous minded. He was afraid, paralyzed by fear. Why should he have been paralyzed by fear? Because he didn't understand evidently what the king was trying to do. He didn't understand the king himself knew that he was a hard taskmaster and couldn't imagine anything beyond that, and he failed the test. Parables always put a question to us. They involve us. That's why they're vital from generation to generation. And the question for us, I believe, is simply, can God trust us? God has given us great gifts the spiritual gifts of baptism, the forgiveness of our sins, the Holy Eucharist, the promise of freedom forever, and eternal joy in union with Christ our Savior through our incorporation into his body, the church now. At some point, he will ask us what we have done with these gifts that are pure gift. He has given them to us so that we might grow in holiness and in generosity toward others. But have we used the grace given us by God to grow ever closer to him and to care for those that he has given us to love? Have we shared as widely as possible the gifts that we have received as a kind of trust to be used freely to see if we are trustworthy? We must ask, does God find us trustworthy? Perhaps we are spiritually lazy, perhaps out of fear of God, fear that misunderstands who God is, fear that paralyzes us and stops us from acting responsible. Fear destroys love, and the ability to love and love well is the test that God puts us to. What will you, dear brothers and sisters, tell God when he asks what you have done with his gifts? These days, the question often put to me by the media and by others is, what do you see as your legacy? What, in a sense, do you leave behind after 17 and a half years of ministry as Archbishop of Chicago? Different people, of course, will have different takes on my years here as Archbishop. Some of them I might appreciate and some not, but that's the fate of anyone in a public post, a position of public trust. The question I have to ask myself is, with what have I been entrusted and what have I done with this gift? Like all bishops, I have received a share in the gifts that Christ gives all his people, our common baptism, the Eucharist, the scriptures, the salvation won for us by Christ Jesus. But also there is something more. Every priest and bishop is given the gift of the people that he is called to care for and to love in Christ's name. At some point, Christ will question me. What have you done 
with my people? Are they holier because of your ministry? Are they more generous, more loving toward others? In short, you are my legacy. The people of the Archdiocese are what I will point to when the Lord asks me, what have you done with my gift to you? The people of the Archdiocese are what I point to when the media and others ask, what is your legacy? Have I been at times too fearful to speak, to act, to love generously? Sometimes, certainly. But others can note that even when I don't. But have I invested myself in the people so that they are better able to know and live their faith, able to worship God in spirit and in truth, able to give themselves for the salvation of others? Yes. And it works, as I often says, say. There are a lot of holy people in Cook and Lake Counties. Sacraments are celebrated. The gospel is preached. People are gathered into communities of love that they can transform the world by God's love. It works. There are a lot of holy people in Cook and Lake County. I meet them every week, I've met them for years, and you are among them. Today, with the parable of the three investors in mind, I thank God for all of you, for your cooperation in the mission of the church, for your generosity toward others, especially the poor, for the way in which God has helped me to help you to develop God's gifts to you throughout the years of my ministry here, you are my legacy. And now together let us thank God as in union with Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, we celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Amen. For 17 and a half years, Cardinal George has praised God and served in this part of the vineyard called Chicago as the Archbishop of Chicago. For 13 of those years, he's entrusted me with the pastorate of Holy Name Cathedral. I hope I've lived up to it, Your Eminence, and I hope you're proud of what we have created. He has said Mass at, I think, every parish altar in the Archdiocese over his time, but at no parish altar as he praised God and offered the holy sacrifice more often than at that one in our sanctuary. We're happy to have him back here today to do so. I express my thanks to him for the job he entrusted to me, but I also express the thanks of the whole parish. Last week, Father John Boyvin, one of our associates, organized the parishioners in demonstrating their gratitude with written expressions that have been bound and are now presented to you by the Parish Pastoral Council President, uh, Kyle Williams, and the Vice Chair, Lori Doyle, who represent all of us in saying thank you, Cardinal George, for making us a terrific parish. Those two very kind words, typical words of Monsignor Mayo, give me a chance now to thank him and all the priests and the staff and the lay ministers and parish council and, of course, the magnificent choirs of this cathedral parish for the way in which uh, together we have worshipped God in these years and the way in which they have exemplified here what a magnificent cathedral parish should be, its outreach to the city in its intensification of the spiritual exercises for those who come here for 
at Mass week after week, and in so many ways, I'm extraordinarily proud of Holy Name, proud of the way in which it has developed under Monsignor Mayo's careful shepherding, proud to be associated with it. And I continue to be associated with the names of all the other archbishops, and now Archbishop Supic, that will be in the vestibule. I know he is very pleased with what he will see here, and uh, know that I will remain very pleased all the days of my life. You are my legacy, and I thank you with all my heart. God bless you.